Hi guys, good to see you again. Um, welcome back to another video. I know I've been very quiet on my channel. It's just been very busy last couple of weeks and months and I'm definitely going to start putting in a concerted effort to make more videos for you guys. But uh, today I'm going to quickly chat about this little guy I've got here. This is the Canon EOS R and I've had it for just over about a month and um, I've done quite a bit of shoots with it and um, I feel confident that I can have a nice chat about this now. But okay, right, so let's, let, let's get into this. I'm not going to be talking about any of the specs. There is one million videos on YouTube about the specs of it, the pros and the cons and, and all those kind of things that, that everybody talks about. And there's people that had it before it was released. So those videos has been out for four or five months already on YouTube. And, and from, I promise you, I have watched all of them in my decision to what I'm going to be buying um, as my new camera. All right, so let's quickly have a look at what I like and what I don't like about the camera. Um, yeah, like I said, not going to be going into, into the specs. All right, so let's quickly... The fit of the camera in your hand is fantastic. It, it is hardly any difference between this and my Canon 60, which I've been used to for the last five years or six years that I've been shooting with it. So with regards to that, it, it, it fits in perfectly. The 60 is a little bit a little bit more bulkier around the around the grip area, but that's fine because the body is bigger because it's got the mirror in it. The, the next thing is the adapter. Everybody's spoken about the adapter. This is my, from the experience I've got with it, is that it is simply mind-blowing. I do not know how Canon has made the technology so that if you put a lens on this, you'll get the same focus focal length is what you would have got on a normal DSLR body. Now, I've had a look, that distance from the sensor is not, it's definitely further than what it is if you put it straight onto a, a camera body with a mirror in it. That's the only, only thing that I can think of that you, how they would have made it is that, you, is that this distance from where the lens mounts to the sensor is the same as what the full body would have been with the mirror box in it. But then again, I might be wrong. It, it might, I've not seen any loss in, in my focal range. So 35 mil is 35 mil. Um, 70 to 216 to 35, everything is as it should be as it was on my 6D, which is amazing. Coupled with this is that the autofocus is just, just it just works. Um, this is a, one of my workhorse lenses, my Canon 35 mil f2 lens this is an old old lens it's been discontinued many years ago and it works absolutely seamlessly with with this adapter um, there, there's no lag in autofocus if you if you where you focus it's there um, i did not even have this with my canon 6d if i did not use the center focus point um, primarily with this lens I would battle to get focus, even on the edges. So even if I would move my focus points to my furthest ones with this lens on the 60, I would battle to get, to grab proper focus. And the times when it, when it did get focus, a lot of those images were not sharp. So I had to, and, and, and like you know, if, if, you, if you focus and recompose on F2, um, you could land up with shifting your focal plane just a little bit which meaning that you, you're going to be out of, the depth of field is going to be off, which is going to result in a soft photo. But with this, not an issue at all. It is, it's absolutely mind-blowing. And the same with all the other lenses. With my 7200, my 17-40, uh, uh, my 100 macro, my Sigma 150-600, which I've had now for um, three and a half years. I've never updated the firmware on it. Slap it on here, it's bang on. It is solid 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 there was i shot with it uh, last week and it was instant the focusing you didn't have it long zzz, hunting for focus nothing like that nothing it was just it was it was there so i'm blown away by that going from my 6d to this autofocus system which i believe is the same as what's in a canon 5d mark 4 and all those things that all the other videos talk about 
it is a jump ahead by light years. So just for that pure reason, it, it's definitely worth buying it or upgrading it from the 60 to this. Right, so the next reason why I went with this camera and not with the Sony, because I was looking at the Sony A7, A7 III, um, I really wanted to get that camera. It, it, was, it fell in line with my specs, the, the video specs and everything was good. The only two differences between that camera and this camera that I, can, that I could find um, that would have made me buy the Sony is the video specs, uh, um, HD 120 frames per second, where this one is only 60. Looking at that, I've shot some footage with it and I cannot, I'm, I'm happy with 60 frames per second. For the work that I do with it, 60 frames per second is, is great. Uh, it, it, it just works. All right, so people said to me, do not buy this camera. It is not an upgrade from a Canon 5D Mark IV. That might be the case, but I looked at the prices and to be honest, I was not going to be spending a thousand to thousand five hundred dollars or fifteen to twenty thousand rand in South Africa. I was not going to be spending that more just to have a damn mirror in the, in the camera. Um, yes, the body might be stronger, it might be better with a seal and so forth. There is many reasons why a 5D Mark IV could be better than this. But for me personally, for what I do, 20,000 rand means it's three quarters of the way to another body like this. So that's why I went with this one and not the Canon 5D Mark IV. There's been friends of mine who bought Canon 5D Mark IVs um, in the States and in Dubai and in China um, for the same price as what this is. But locally, I could not get a better price than what I on, on any gear, new ones especially, than what I got on, on this camera. So it fell in perfectly with what I needed, what my budget was, and the ideal upgrade for me from my 6D Mark, uh, Mark 1. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so let's look at one of the, some of the other little things that's, that's good for me. The, um, obviously, like you've seen in all the other videos, the flip out screen, which is magic. I use it all the time. Um, I do not do vlogging on this, or I haven't done anything yet. Um, but I use it all the time for funny angles that I want to shoot at, or anything like that. Right, so that, that, is, that is fantastic. The next thing, uh, let's get back to the autofocus quickly, is the, with the dual pixel autofocus is that you've got this whole screen area as your focus section. Um, and that you've got to move it around with your thumb on the on the back while looking through the eyepiece. The viewfinder is absolutely fantastic. One of the features that I've built in is eye autofocus. Um, it is a bit laggy still. It's not the same as what the Sony's is. I've, I've not shot with the Sony's, but I believe the Sony's is next level amazing. Um, the times that I have used it, it worked absolutely fantastic. Um, Especially if you're working with people where you've got to do an interview type style, um, if they're walking around um, and you, in video mode you want to record it and it will just keep on tracking them. And the same with, with, with the stills as well. Any problems, you've only got, you've only got it in one shot and not in, in um, multiple shots. So yeah, it is, it is pretty amazing, it, 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 it works. Um, I'm pretty sure that um, Canon will be updating the eye autofocus firmware um, when they do firmware updates on the camera. Right, so the next thing. This camera does not have a joystick at the back. And I know a lot of people have spoken about it and so forth. Even if this direction pad could have controlled focus points, it would have been amazing. All your focus points gets done by moving your, your thumb while looking through your viewfinder. You, you move your focus point on the back of the camera like that, which works fantastic. My problem with that that I've got with this is, is that if you shoot with your left eye, with your left eye, your nose, your nose will be touching the screen over here. If you shoot with your right eye, no problem, all your nose is past the camera body. If you shoot in portrait mode with your left eye, 
and I like to shoot with my I like to shoot with my arms close to my body because it gives me more stability. I can hold the camera st uh, more steady um, with slower shutter speeds. So if I shoot like this with my left eye, it's all fine. I can I can my nose is past here. But if I shoot with my right eye like I'm used to, my nose touches the screen over there, which results in if you've set your focus point to a certain area on the, on the camera or in your, in your viewfinder, as soon as you touch it with your nose, it will jump there immediately. And if you have not locked your focus yet, your focus will be off. Now this is, this is important for when you're shooting um, action type stuff where you've got subjects moving um, and you quickly want to go from shooting or, uh, uh, landscape mode to portrait mode, you're going you're gonna to run into that. So yes. You can you can get around that if you know that if you shoot with your right eye, then as soon as you go to portrait mode, you're going to go to your left eye. But we are so I'm in such a habit at this stage. It's like driving a car. You don't think about when you're going to switch over the gears. That is that is one of the problems I've got. Yes. Now you can also you can also. Um, designate the area on the screen that you want for your for your trackpad for where you want to control your focus if you put it in the left and top corner it is too far for your right thumb that you'll be using to move that if you put it in the bottom corner your nose is in the way again it, it just that i would have loved to have had the option where i could switch off the screen and use a, a controller thumbstick direction pad um, to move around my focus point. Okay, the next thing that was bother bothering me when I was, um, just, when, just before I got the camera, I started thinking about this and, and then um, one of the guys at Canon told me what to do. And he also had to go look for it because none of the videos that, that I've watched mention this. Nobody talks about it. And, one, and that major thing is that if you're shooting studio work and, and weddings, especially wedding receptions, is that late at night or when it's dark and in studios often you kill, you basically kill all ambient light. So your sensor shows, your, your electronic viewfinder shows you what the settings is. So which is awesome that if you're shooting in bright daylight or normal, any normal shoot, you can see your exposure through the, through the viewfinder which means is that edit, editing time will be cut off or, or cut, cut shorter and you'll shoot less. Um, I'm still in the mode where I shoot two or three frames out of habit and, and that's unfortunately one of the bad habits that you pick up with shooting weddings is that you don't want to miss that, the, miss that particular moment. And so that I will still shoot two or three frames but that's out of pure habit. But in general, my exposure is spot on if the, if the my subject's eyes are open, I only need one image, or two images perhaps, um, just as a backup one. But now, with when you're shooting studio and you're going to kill all ambient light, and, and you've got your exposure set up, you cannot see on the viewfinder because it will probably give you just a black screen. Um, because that's, with your settings and the available light, that's, if you take an exposure without using strobes or anything, it will just be a black exposure. The same with wedding receptions. If you're shooting late at night, you cannot shoot at one fifteenth of a second or one twentieth of a second all the time because you'll just get end up with heaps of motion blurred images. You need to shoot at a hundred of a one one hundredth of a second shutter speed or more um, just to start freezing subjects. And if you've got people dancing fast, even that is too slow still. What you need to do is you need to go into the menu function and go to the section where it says exposure simulation and you need to turn that off. Um, nobody talks about this right, anywhere in any of the videos. So right, so once you've done that, this will give you as if you put your camera into a bulb setting and, and it will just give you an exposure reading of what the ambient light is so you can actually see what the hell is going on there. Now for shooting in studio this is very very nice because you can easily see your composition on the back of the camera. So when I'm shooting products, I can adjust my product standing on the table. I can adjust it any which way I want by seeing it live on the screen. So I can see if labels are straight, all those kind of things. Where in the past, I had to take a picture, go into the screen, zoom in and see, okay, right now it's not straight. 
move it, take the picture, because if the camera is mounted on a tripod at a certain, you don't want to look to the viewfinder particularly because that will might bump your camera. So if you're doing multiple exposures, you cannot overlap them easily because your camera has been slightly moved, a hair breadth of a millimeter. But with this, I can see that live on the screen. So I can, even if, I'm, if, if I've got my setup over there, I can flip up my screen like this and I can see on my screen as I'm adjusting it. So, and, and I can zoom in on here as well on the screen to get a, a good idea if what I want where is at the right place, which is, which is amazing. It cuts a lot of time and um, wasted images out of the, out of the equation. All right, but now my issue with that is, if you're shooting weddings late at night, um, this viewfinder will give you a reading of what it sees. Now, the frame rate drops so much when it's dark that you get this wobbly image in your, in your, um, in your viewfinder. Um, yes, you can shoot on the back of the camera, but that, if I'm following someone, I just keep on tracking them, it's just easy to keep doing that. But then that, that image that you see inside is so blurry that you cannot see what you're shooting. You're not sure if, it's, if, if it's, you've got the autofocus on the right area or the right people. Whereas with the 6D with the mirror, I know that my center focus point is locked in. I keep my back button focus in on servo and it will be tracking those people in the shot. Yes, some of the shots might be blurry, some of them might be out of focus, but my heat rate on, my, on a, on a DSLR with a mirror is so much more than what this is um, shooting fast moving subjects late at night people dancing on dance floor so wedding photographers if you buy this be aware of that that is one of the things that I've picked up that I didn't like it, it made me feel dizzy as well obviously this eyes closed you look at this and you see a wobbly image in front of your eyes it's not it's not the greatest but other than that, the electronic viewfinder is absolutely amazing. I've, people have asked me how quickly did I adjust to it. It was instantly. It was like shooting live view. Um, all right, so that is my issue with that. Late at night, studio work is fine because you can use the back of the screen. But, uh, but if you're shooting uh, documentary type stuff late at night stills, you are going to um, battle a little bit with that. So. A con. Con for me. That's one of the only things. Um, button layouts. The little slide bar at the back for your ISO and skipping through images is okay. Um, I've looked. It takes about the same amount of time to set your ISO on this as it would have been on a normal camera. We had an ISO button. Press it. Dial in. Take a shot to see if the ISO is right because you can look through but the, the exposure meter might not be where you want it to be. Um, it, it might show you overexposed on, the, on, on your exposure meter but it's not actually overexposed. It might be just where the camera's reading or whatever the story is. So with this you can see the, the image change at the back or in your viewfinder as you adjust the exposure. So you can keep your, sh your, your same shutter speed settings and you can adjust your ISO and you can see exactly what the effect will be on the image, which is, which is amazing. Again, cutting down shooting time. So with that, it, I, I do not have it switched on all the time because you do bump this. And it, it, I, I had it in my, the wedding shoot, the wedding I had, I shot when I had the camera for three days, I had it on and I was busy shooting bridal portraits and I had a look at the things and, and, I, and I saw I'm on ISO 5000 already, which I only needed 800. So I, I put the lock back on. You literally need to hold it for a second and a half or two seconds and it switches on and then you adjust your, your ISO and it switches off again, So which is, which is great. Um, the one thing I still need to get a little bit used to is because you've got the function button at the top here to adjust your modes. So I need you, you press that and then you scroll through whatever. So you don't have the, the mode dial button on the top anymore. I need to get a little bit used to that, not a train smash. Um, video it doesn't have a dedicated video switch. You need to assign that. Um, and it, it was, I can't even remember what it was. 
um, I think it was the function button or one of these and the info as soon as you press that it went into video mode with all the video settings and the menu and all those things I assigned it so that my little star button at the top I press that and my info and it goes to goes into video because I can do that while my eyes my eyes up to the viewfinder I don't have to go and look for which damn button I need to press to to do that um, so that was easier and then same thing again press it again and it goes back into stills so so that's that's it the, 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 the system just works flawlessly um, video quality out of this is, is amazing um, image quality out of this is, a, is amazing um, can't really it, it's a great picture that comes out of it I, I didn't I haven't, I haven't done any astro images with it um, I haven't really done major pixel peeping or compared ISOs between this and the 60. I know that the images I got out of this was great. They worked. File sizes is big. My Mac is old, so it struggles a bit with the file sizes, and especially you start shooting panos and start stitching them up. Yeah, those things um, bat a little bit. Um, one of the th settings inside that I use all the time on my 6D and all my other DSLRs that I've had is that you could have changed the, the resolution of your RAW files. You had a full resolution RAW, you had a medium RAW and a small RAW. Um, I use that all the time, especially if I shot time lapses. I would have used a small RAW because you can still export the resolution at 4K resolution time lapse from that small RAW image, so, which means you could shoot a lot more, editing is quicker, all that. The same and at weddings. All my reception stuff, the church things, basically all images that would never have been printed bigger than an A4, I would have shot in medium raw. Then as soon as you go to bridal portraits and, and the bridal couple getting ready and all that, I would have switched it to full raw because those are the images that couples would likely be putting up as A0 prints or whatever on their walls. Um, so those I shot at maximum resolution. Um, all the other ones was at medium raw save um, space on my cards um, and also editing time with this i've got full raw and compressed raw all still 30 megapixel files um, i've not looked at the size difference really between the two but um, uh, it's not significant i would have liked to because the other one was dumbing it down from uh, on the canon from 21 megapixels to 12 to 6 um, that, that made more sense to me than having a 30, 30, 30 megapixel image just with less info. If you dumbed it down to 12 megapixels, it would just, it just it was just better for me. But right, so pros and cons, that's about it. I cannot find much fault with this camera. It is, it works amazing. It, um, everything just works. My flashes work, my triggers work. My heap of batteries I already had from my old cameras, they fit, they work seamlessly, the whole bank shoot. Um, on the subject of batteries, the batteries do not last as long as a DSLR. Um, for the wedding I shot, I went through about um, two and a half batteries on this, where I would normally have shot um, a full wedding, and th that was shooting with two bodies. On, on a normal wedding, I would have used one battery in each bot body and they would still have had 50% or more power on at the end of a wedding. So this one charges a lot of battery and it's understandable. It's a screen that's running, it's a screen that's running. So as soon as you take it away from your eye, the screen goes on. It will, it will use a lot more battery than what a DSLR uh, would have used. So other than that, it fits in perfectly with the way I shoot menu systems, the whole bank shoot, everything that everybody has been talking about in the videos is there. Now, something that is interesting is that according to the rumor site, today is the 12th of February 2019. On the 14th of Valentine's Day, um, it is rumored that Canon will be releasing the new RP. And from the specs that I've seen on the internet, um, is that they're looking at a 24 megapixel or 26 megapixel sensor um, same autofocus system apparently it will shoot 4k i'm not sure a couple of little things here and there with the um, video but they didn't give a lot of video specs but if the layout is, and, and doesn't have the slide bar at the back which is okay if 
you can get the adapter with the ring, which I probably will get later on. That will even make it even easier. Um, but I'm curious to see how that one will be performing alongside this. Now that the eight is already set, now it's a 6D Mark II sensor and all that mumbo jumbo. I don't care. It, it, your best camera is the one you've got in your hand. You do, your clients do not go pixel peeping. They, they simply do not. Um, so if you ever wondered about that and you do not want to spend all the money to switch over from a Canon system to a Sony, this is a fantastic camera. It, it will definitely complement your setup that you've got and everything will work. You don't have to buy new flashes, new batteries, new chargers, new freaking everything. Everything is here. So, all right, so I'm, I'm curious to see what the EOS RP will be doing. Um, Price-wise, I think it's going to be very well priced. They're talking about sub one fifty sub fifteen hundred dollars, which is an amazing price. Uh, literally, uh, if if that's the case, I would look at selling my backup sixty two body of uh, my sixty one body, and buy one of those because it will just if you've got two mirrorless bodies, it will just work nicely together. So yeah, looking forward to the to the EOS RP, but the EOS R is a great camera. And I'm not saying that because I'm invested in Canon or anything. I bought this with my own money. Um, I'm saying it because it's a great camera and it does what it says on the box. Um, and some of it does better. So yes, there we go. My quick couple of minutes with the EOS R and to tell you a little bit about it. If you've got any questions or comments, please post them at the bottom, subscribe, and I'm looking forward to chatting to all of you. Thanks, guys. Cheers.